Morning guys, Dave Cadbury at the Pathfinder School back out here with another video in our basic witchery of archery series. We've talked a little bit about bows, we've talked a little bit about shooting form in general, and I'm still getting a lot of questions about arrows. So I kind of wanted to cover a little bit about arrows and things like that today and arrow flight in general, different types of arrows that you can use, what you should and should not use with your traditional bow, and then we'll do a little bit of uh, a demonstration, hopefully, on what your arrow will look like if you've got the wrong arrow versus the right arrow in a target. So let me get this camera moved around here so you can get an up-close look at some of these arrows while we talk about this. Stay with me, guys. Guys, real quick before we get into a discussion about different types of arrows and fletchings and things like that, let's discuss arrow length. And we talked about how to set your bow up with a knock point on the string a little bit above center line so that your arrow has a little bit of a downward angle. We talked about the clearance being the brace height between the string and the shelf and what that's supposed to be. Now let's talk about how long your arrow is supposed to be or should be for optimum performance. Obviously the longer your arrow is the more weight you have. The more weight you have, number one, the more resistance you have to flight and number two, the heavier it's going to be and you're going to lose accuracy over distance faster. So the shortest arrow you can get away with is really what you want. And you want your arrow so that when you pull your bow to full draw, that you have about one inch of arrow sticking out the back of the bow with the point attached to it. So it should look similar to this, that full draw. Now you'll notice when I put this arrow on the table, it will be much shorter than the other arrows on the table, and that's because my draw length is short compared to a normal standard arrow. Most arrows that you buy come standard length of 31 inches, so that they can be trimmed down or made smaller for anyone's actual draw length. But 31 inches is a standard length arrow that you would buy blank somewhere for archery. So the arrows that I'm going to show you, some of them will be a little bit longer than the arrow I just showed you, and that's the reason for that. And I want to explain that to you beforehand because that primitive arrow was made by me, hand cut, hand fletched, hand hafted, and made for this bow at my draw length for hunting. So it is a shorter arrow. It's about 27 and a half inches long. My draw length is about 26 and three quarters to 27 inches, depending on the bow I'm using. Okay, so now let's discuss what is the right arrow versus what is the wrong arrow for your bow. And there are a lot of input factors to that answer. But the very first one that you need to understand is if you're shooting a traditional bow, as we spoke in the video prior to this one in part two, you really need to have feathers for fletchings. Okay, and these are the fletchings on the back, back here. These are considered veins and they're plastic. Most of your compound arrows, arrows that you buy on the market today, are going to have these plastic veins. You don't want that. You want feathers. You want feathered fletchings. We won't get into right helical, left helical, straight helical or non-helical. We won't talk about all of that stuff because it's really not going to make a big difference for you at this point. Let's just get our basics down first. So once we get our arrow fletching correct, then we need to know what type of arrow we need for our bow. It doesn't really matter whether you shoot wood, aluminum, or carbon, as long as the bow, or as long as the arrow is matched to your bow well. And the way you match your bow to your arrow is called spine weight. And spine weight means how much the arrow flexes when it's shot out of your bow at a certain weight for draw length. And we talked about before, standard draw weights are set at 28 inches. This bow is a handmade hickory bow that I made some years ago. Um, it is 60 pounds at 28 inches. At my draw length, it's about 56 pounds, somewhere in that general neighborhood. So I need a, an arrow with a spine weight, in other words, the flexing weight of that arrow is 55 to 60 pounds. Somewhere in that neighborhood will give me the best arrow flight. What you need to understand with your arrow is that when you shoot your arrow out of a bow, traditional, whatever the case may be, recurve, long bow, reflex, deflex, the back of that arrow has got greater momentum in the beginning of the shot than the front of the arrow, which causes the arrow to flex. And that flex is called your spine weight. And that dictates your arrow flight because when your arrow 
wraps around like this or flexes on your bow, it will straighten out in flight. If it does not straighten out before it reaches the target because it's spine weighted too weak and you've pushed that flex too much, then you're going to end up with an arrow sitting sideways in a target like this instead of straight like this. If you have too heavy of an arrow and it can't flex, it's going to do the same thing or the opposite. It's going to be off center. It's not going to be centered correctly because it cannot flex when it shoots through the bow, so it's going to deflect the only way it can. And it's going to usually be sticking in the target this direction if you're shooting a bow right-handed. A properly spine-weighted arrow will hit the arrow, will hit the target straight and be sticking out of the target straight every time. So that's a really good thing you can look at with your bow very easily with the equipment that you have. Are your arrows hitting the target straight every time? If they're not, you probably have a spine weight issue. Now, with a fishing arrow, with a fishing arrow, and I should go back and say that carbon and aluminum are much more forgiving spine weight wise than wood. Wood is the most picky as far as spine weight goes. You can get away with a little bit more with aluminum, you can get away with a lot more with carbon because carbon flex is really, really good. It doesn't stay flex, it's got a lot of reflex to it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it springs back faster, even if the spine weight's not exactly right. So you'll get better flight out of a carbon, and it'll be faster because it's lighter than you will out of wood most of the time if you've got an unmatched, if you don't have a perfect match between your arrow and your bow as far as spine weight. So back to fletchings for a second. There's no fletchings on a fishing arrow most of the time because the fletchings merely stabilize the arrow in flight over distance. If you're fishing, you're going to be shooting distances of probably 20 feet or less. You don't need fletchings for that because you're not trying to stabilize that arrow over distance. It's already weight forward because it has a heavy broad head on the front that's made for fishing or a heavy fishing barbed tip on the front for fishing. So it's going to fly fairly straight, straight out of the bow at that 20 foot distance. One thing that you can do if you're making your own arrows to check spine weight is you can shoot the bare shaft at about 8 nine yards somewhere in the five to eight ten yard range and see how it hits the target if it lands in the target straight without any feathers on it you've definitely got good spine weight for your bow so that's just one little thing that you can do to check yourself if you're building your own arrows okay going back to fletchings for a minute this arrow as you can see is different than the other arrows that are sitting here that feathers are much bigger and that's called a flu flu arrow and really that arrow was made for shooting targets that are aerial because it slows the arrow down very quickly and doesn't allow it to travel as far so they're harder to lose. I prefer a lot of times to shoot flu-flu arrows even at small game because again they don't go as far if you miss and I like that. If they skip off something they don't near, tend to go as far as a normal arrow but that's just a personal preference. Now for anyone who's asking about making arrows, making your own arrows, hafting arrows with points, hafting arrows, putting feathers on arrows, making feathers out of duct tape, all of those things are in my archery playlist. All you have to do is go through the playlist. Everything is there from collecting shafts in the woods to straightening shafts to making feathered fletchings, making duct tape fletchings, hafting stone points, making stone points, making metal points on the fly, making small game points out of spent cartridges. All of those things are on my archery playlist. I would encourage you to go look through that before you ask the question, um, can I do this or can I do that or can you show how to do this because I've probably already shown how to do it at least once. Um, and I'll go through that playlist and make sure that they're all there for you guys um, as I'm posting this video as well. So let's take some of these arrows out and shoot them at a target and see if we can tell some spine weight differences out of this bow. Now, this arrow is straight in the target. This arrow is straight in the target. These two arrows are both cocked off to one side. This one 
is because I was shooting feathers probably, or shooting plastic veins instead of feathers. This one is due to a spine weight issue. That arrow didn't hit that target straight because of the spine weight problem. Too low or too high. If I had to guess, I would say too high because the arrow's cocked this way, which means it probably never did flex correctly coming out of the bow because the spine weight was too heavy to let it flex. And because a long bow or traditional bow is already off center, in other words, the shelf is not centered in the middle of the bow like a compound bow, it's off center, you're already shooting that arrow at an angle coming out of the bow. And if it can't flex to make up for that angle, this is what you're going to get. Okay, fellas, just a couple more quick answer system questions uh, before they arise. A lot of people ask me, where can I get good traditional wood arrows that have feathered fletchings? The best place on the internet is Three Rivers Archery. They sell good arrows. I've hunted with their arrows for a long time and shot their arrows in tournaments for a long time. They make great arrows. If you're looking for a good carbon arrow that's got fletchings on it, there's not a lot of places making those. Beeman only makes one model that I know of that has feather fletchings, so they're probably going to be hard to find unless you go to a custom archery shop. But if you're looking for a three-piece takedown model that has fletchings on it, you can get them on our website. Again, you can also, very shortly, you'll be able to get the titanium insert on our website to create that three-piece arrow as well. And we'll be selling those hopefully within the next couple of weeks. We've been going through R&D on different adapters for about two years now on everything from just all thread to machine threadings to uh, parts that are manufactured in different supply houses and we have a surgical company right now making us a titanium insert that seems to be just absolutely perfect and I think that's what we're going to go with but we're still in the testing phase of that right now I'm sure that I'll update you guys that on that when the time comes um, I think I've answered most of the questions that I've been getting as far as strings go I've had a couple questions on strings what kind of string can I use on my bow I would not use paracord. You can in emergencies, but I would not use it on a regular basis. I would use bank line, number 36 bank line, reverse wrap two-ply cordage so it's double the thickness. String that on your bow, anything up to 60 pounds, that stuff would be good to go. Um, what you're looking for on a bow string is tensile strength of 10 times the bow. In other words, if my bow is 60 pounds, then I want a string that has a breaking strength of 600 pounds. So if I take reverse wrap two-ply cordage, that's 36, number 36, that's 360-pound test, and I double it, I've got more than enough. It gives me the right thickness, and you're not going to wear that out very easy. You can serve it, and that'll make it last longer. The other thing that I have used many times on bows up to 50 pounds is artificial sinew, or you can buy commercial bow strings like places from, uh, like Three Rivers Archery, where you can get the arrows from, made out of B50 or Fast Flight. Uh, Fast Flight is a little bit, uh, has a little bit less stretch to it than B50 does, but you really need at least a reflex, deflex, or recurve bow to shoot Fast Flight well. Otherwise, I would go with a B50 Dacron. I hope that answers a lot of the questions that I've had so far uh, in this basic archery series. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for all my sponsors and supporters, and we'll be back with another video as soon as we can. Thanks, guys.